and happy, happy first um, update of IVF cycle number two. We're on IVF cycle number two, and so I know this will be the first official video that I do on this. And so I'm going to give you all the details for those of you who might not have seen my first cycle or how things went with that. I'll leave a link to a playlist somewhere over here, there, somewhere like that. But I will give a recap and then kind of talk to you today about what's going to be new, what's going to be happening in regards to that. It is very late at night. I am getting ready to go to bed just in case my hair looks a little different um, it could be a it, more of the story is i washed it but i didn't retwist it and so when i wash my hair and i let it dry and i don't retwist it it just gets really uh poofy and full you may not be able to tell but i can tell too just in case you can tell that's what's happening um but anyway i am excited to come with you come to you with the update because we did have our first um, I guess you can call it IVF consultation for this particular cycle. Just a recap of what happened in my first cycle. So my first IVF cycle would technically be considered a success. And the reason being is because at the end of the day, we did end up having embryos that we were able to freeze. Unfortunately, if you've seen my most recent video, then you know that um, all of the embryos that we were able to freeze did not come back um i guess genetically sound or chromosomally normal and so hence cycle number two uh, the good thing about that is that we knew even before finding out that the three of them were not actually all normal with all their chromosomes and all of our other stuff we had already decided that we were going to be doing ivf cycle number two um we pretty much knew from the time that uh I guess I could say we pretty much knew from the beginning, from the moment that they retrieved them and a certain amount were uh, mature, we knew at that point that there was a large possibility that we'd be doing IVF number two. So for those of you who don't know, my husband has a three-way genetic chromosomal rearrangement and so all of our embryos have to be genetically tested. Um, at this point, the only way to really become pregnant in our particular situation is through IVF. Do we have the ability to become pregnant naturally? Yes, we do. We've been pregnant plenty of times, um, but they've all ended in miscarriage due to this translocation thing that we got going. And so because of that, uh, they all have to be tested before time. My husband's translocation is extremely rare. And so because of that, we know that the likelihood of vast majority of them coming back abnormal is pretty high so this past cycle we did ivf we retrieved 16 eggs or 16 follicles or whatever you want to call them of those 16 um seven of them ended up being mature of the seven four of them ended up fertilizing properly of those four three of them made it to be able to be biopsied sent away to be genetically tested and frozen of those three all three of them ended up coming back um abnormal and so those are the numbers there for you and so going into IVF cycle number one we obviously had an idea on which numbers we wanted because we knew um that the likelihood is about one in eight at this point one in nine uh of having normal versus abnormal so for every nine embryos is a possibility that we may have one that's normal and so when we were told that we had seven we kind of knew that the likelihood of them coming back abnormal was going to be high but let's make a long story short uh, the problem that we had, and we did discuss this at the end of our cycle, was the fact that we had 16 um, eggs that were totally fine, but only seven of them were mature. And so in this case, we knew that they should have had me trigger later, which would have been a day later or two days later. They were looking at about a day later. Problem is, my levels were very high. And because I have PCOS and I already produce a lot of follicles on my own, um, they are constantly checking your levels. And because my levels were so high, they didn't want to risk me having OHSS. So on the day of my actual egg retrieval, I was in the 4000s. Um, and so they had to give me some type of medicine in my IV and all sorts of shenanigans um but the moral of the story is they triggered early because they were worried about me getting ohss 
And in triggering early, I ended up having more immature eggs than actually mature eggs. And then a lot of you saw that when I went to my first ultrasound appointment for, for IVF number one, um, that my levels were not where they, where they wanted to see them, and not levels, but um, my follicles were not growing at the rate that they would have wanted to see them after the four days. So they ended up having to up my dosage versus the normal IVF cycle where you start high and they kind of down cycle you. So um, more of the story is a lot of stuff has changed between IVF number one and IVF number two. Some of the details I will get into, some of them I won't. Um, but in terms of protocol, IVF number one, what I ended up doing was 150 IU of Donald F and then also 150 IU of Menopure. And then when it got closer to um, my retrieval, we started doing Cetratide every day in addition to that. So the determination was the fact that I was having too much menopure during that cycle. Because of my, PC, my PCOS, they would prefer for me to only do 75 IU of menopure because it was the menopure that was causing my levels to go up high, even though the follicle growth wasn't exactly where they needed it to be. Um, so that's one major change. Uh, the fact that I will not be doing 150 IU of menopure this cycle, which is two vials, I'll actually end up doing 75 IU this cycle, which is just one vial to prevent my levels, you know, like kind of skyrocketing before they're supposed to. Uh, the other thing is because they had to up my dose after the first four days, they're going to start with the higher dose and then hope to cycle it down. Um, so where I started with the 150 IU, my first IVF cycle, I'm actually going to start with 250 IU of Gonal F this cycle. So I'll be doing 250 IU of Gonal F this cycle, um, 75 IU of Menopure, and then we still have the Cetratide um, in line for later on when it's closer to retrieval time. And so my feelings on this whole thing, I'm actually really excited because as you guys know from watching my vlogs, I wasn't really thrilled about the fact that um, after going to the first ultrasound that the follicles were not growing in the way that I would have liked for them to see. The numbers were not happening at the speed that I would have liked to see them at. Um, but in the end, I was happy that even with that, that we were able to retrieve uh, 16 follicles. The thing with that is that I would have loved for the 16 to all be mature, or at least vast majority of them to be mature. Um, you usually have a higher rate of maturity, usually about 85 to 90 percent of maturity um, when you get ready to have them inseminated and all sorts of things, have the ICSI done on the eggs. Uh, so the fact that going from 16 to 7 was pretty drastic and it wasn't something that anybody really expected. Um, but I'm definitely super excited about this. I feel like this is going to be good. I definitely feel like it's going to be good. Um, I feel like the follicles will um, have a better chance at growing faster at the rate that they should be because we're starting at the higher dose. Dose. Um, they're looking to have me obviously trigger later depending on how the cycle goes and how it's going with the menopure in terms of it not making my level skyrocket. And so I feel like the plan that we have this cycle is the best plan. Um, now, the outcome of that, again, like I started with IVF number one, I can't promise an outcome like that. I, it could go wonderful, I could get 20 <laughs> eggs and 20 of them could be mature and we can have them all exceed and then have them all at the end and biopsy them and then there still be a large possibility that we don't have any that are normal and so this is the reason why in my first IVF video which I will post over here over there I kind of let everyone know that our situation is very different than anybody else's and we are aware of the fact um that we are up against a very large mountain <laughs> is what I'm going to say. Um, but as always, we still believe that it is worth the fight. Um, it is worth staying on this journey to see the pot of gold that's going to be at the end of the rainbow because I really and truly do believe that. I have believed that for all these years. If you've been following my channel all this time, then you know I have been a strong believer in our family. Um, I have been a strong believer in there being a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And I've also been a strong believer in the fact that although this struggle is hard and it's been a long time coming, um, that when we are finally pregnant and everything is great, 
um, that this will be a thing of the past um, and it'll be so worth it. I definitely believe it'll be so worth it. So for any of you out there who are currently TTCing, whether you're doing IVF, you're doing IV IUIs and trying naturally, you're doing home inseminate, whatever it is that you're doing, if you believe in your heart that this is what you're supposed to have, then I would tell you not to give up. It does get hard, um, but there's a quote that I tell people all the time that um, when you're in the midst of the struggle and you feel like giving up, you kind of got to remember the reason why you started. And we started this whole thing three years ago, not knowing where it was going to lead us, but we most certainly did not think that it was going to bring us here. Um, but I am truly grateful to God to give us the opportunity to be able to do IVF number one. Um, I'm even more grateful for him giving us the ability to do IVF number two. Because as you know, along with it being... Um, emotionally challenging, physically challenging. Um, it also is very expensive. <laughs> it's also very, it's very expensive. Um, so all I can say is thank you, Jesus, uh, for putting us in the position to be here to be able to do this at this time. Because I know that at the beginning of our TTC journey, that this wouldn't have been something that we would have looked into or anything like that. So anyway, the moral of the story is keep fighting the good fight. I, I keep saying this because um, someone had commented on my videos a while back and they, you know, they were saying, you know, like just keep fighting the good fight. And that's a good term. It's definitely a good term. So if you're out there and you're struggling, just know we are all on the same boat together. I am on the same boat with you. Um, and you should definitely keep fighting the good fight because I'm going to keep on fighting. We are starting IVF cycle number to not anything I could have ever imagined um, not anything that I feel that anybody else wants to do you know what I mean in terms of how it felt and how it went I felt like IVF cycle number one was wonderful um, in terms of the shots it was nothing like I had imagined I thought it was gonna be horrible I thought I was gonna be in pain I thought the shots were going to be just awful because I'm not used to taking shots and I'm not really a needle person but it was none of that I hated the manipulator um, but outside of that, it just, it was nothing like what I had expected. Um, so in terms of that, you know, I'm excited because I know that it'll go good with ease. Um, but in terms of wanting to do it again, you never want to have to go through an IVF number two because that means that IVF number one didn't work. <laughs> All right, ladies, I'm going to get going. As always, um, you know, if you've not subscribed, you can go ahead and subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. I am still going to be here. I'm still kicking. I'm going to vlog this entire cycle as well. All of my STEM days and all of that good stuff. Um, yeah, so strap on tight for the next roller coaster ride. <laughs>